Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Packer Universe podcast. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast. A couple of Wisconsin guys bringing you topical and relevant Packers news, along with our most humble, subjective opinions. This is episode 260. We're recording this on a Tuesday, February 20th, 2024. We are continuing our look at the Packers in this early offseason period, about a week and a half from the NFL Combine and about a month from free agency. Let's see what the Packers are up to right now. I'm your host, Tay, and joining me on the comms tonight is our one and only. Ren, what up, Tay? How you doing on this 20th day of February 2024? I'm doing Pretty good. Weather's nice. It almost feels like it's draft time April-ish, but it's not. Psych! It's February. But uh, So you can't complain. I mean, you know, if the Packers were able to practice, I'm sure they would be outside today. It was it was sunny and nice. And when that sun comes, sun comes out um, in this kind of weather in February, it's, it's pretty nice. So, um, yeah, I mean, that just kind of sends out the vibes, I think. So... Uh, other, you know, there's not a lot of Packers news like super coming out. So, you know, your attention kind of wanders to other things like what's coming this year, a spring, a summer, a new Packers season. So, yeah, it's pretty good. How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm good, Tay. It's the 20th. It's the first official day that uh, teams can tag players that could be potential free agents. So what we may talk about over the next few weeks may look a lot different come the start of the league year on the 13th. That's for sure, man, because I know one guy you had off the list, Antoine Winfield. What is it? Junior. Um, Junior. He, uh, he is likely to be tagged by the Buccaneers. So all these things will change and take Mm. place. Some guys will get deals even before the new league year that are, set to be free agents with their teams. So while we may look towards potential free agent signings and the ones we're going to look at really aren't going to be affected by tags likely, right? um, right, it's still going to look a lot different, you know, and there are post June one cuts and other things that can happen. So, you know, roster building begins now, but um, we're really just kind of living in the what if land at the moment over the next few weeks because hey we got to talk about it's packer football and it's fun to do yeah absolutely yeah like like you said uh you know this stuff always changes and morphs and maybe the nfl you know calculates that and depends on that because there's always something to talk about and i guess kind of the uh, off your topic there yesterday the Packers um, decided not to reach any extensions with three players. And I guess basically that means that their dead money cap hit will take effect, um, which will total just under $10 million this on this year's books. And that is for Darnell Savage, offensive tackle Yash Nyman, and uh, our CB and kick returner Keyshawn Nixon. And um, I'd like to hear what you have to say. You know, maybe there's not a lot, Ram, but there at least is a little bit of like speculation because the fact that the Packers didn't reach an extension with these three players. I mean, these guys are on. Uh, well, Savage is a free agent, right? Um, and Nyman and Nixon, um, but they didn't actively like give them an extension. Uh, so. Or get one done get, by that. By, by that yes, time. by today or whatever, or yesterday. Um, so, you know, you could look at this as an indicator, uh, although it's, you know, to the contrary with a couple players in the last several years. Uh, usually when this happens, you don't sign these players back. So I guess what's your initial reaction with that in mind? Um, with Savage, Nyman, and Nixon potentially not even being around or being, uh, di- you know, chosen by the Packers to come back. Um, I don't really have any concerns with it, Tay. I know Nyman's a guy we've talked about. It's kind of fallen out of favor here and there. I think he's going to get an opportunity to start with some team, and I think he's, again, certainly earned it. Um, great swing tackle for the Packers. You, you love to have guys that can do that. You, know, you can kick out right, kick out left. I mean, and kick them in inside at times, even if necessary. So that's a that's a great chess piece to have on your football team. But we all kind of knew the writing on the wall was was done with Yash after this year. So not mm-hmm. a guy 
I think anybody in the universe expected back. Um, but you know, again, that said for, for, uh, Darnell and, and Keyshawn, it doesn't mean something can't get done. Um, I really think Darnell is going to hit the open market and they're going to, they're going to see, I mean, along with see what guys that might fit, you know, the new halfway system a little bit better. I think, I think Savage could play in that system, but it just comes down to, Hey, let them test the market. Green Bay might make, make them off, offer and say, Hey, go see what's out there for you. And if you think it's better, you know, go where you need to go. I mean, that's just one of those things. Um, but we, we felt different ways about Aaron Jones last year, right down to the, I think the wire were like, we thought he was gone. Yeah. I, I know I yeah. did. Like Aaron's going to, we're going to, Aaron Jones going to be a Packer anymore. And then suddenly it was today. So I don't, try to put a whole lot of stock into that just that you didn't get done deals done with those three guys again i don't think diamond's coming back any in any way shape or form but uh savage seeing savage again in a packer uniform next year or um Keyshawn, i mean i i wouldn't be surprised one way or the other so we'll we'll see what happens and that's going to be the same for other guys too i mean i know that uh lucas and not lucas patrick uh um uh, runyon jr yeah, you know, right. not not graded out so great as an interior offensive lineman in the NFL. He was he's pretty uh, low on the ratings through Pro Football Focus. So another guy that they they know likes the Packers a lot, and they may have a dollar number figured out for him. They say, hey, it'd be worth you know both of us getting a big getting back together for this number. But you know, ultimately go out there see what what you may or may not get as an offer. I mean, it's it's one of those things. All it does, as we talked about, is take one one team. But we'll see a lot of these guys leave, and we'll see a lot of them come back. And this year, we, when we first talked about the, the upcoming pending free agents, it was probably one of the easiest years to just go, okay, whatever happens, happens with any and every one of those guys. How yep. about you? Yeah. No, I, uh, when I look at those three, I guess the way I see it playing out is Nyman's gone. Savage hits the open market. He's probably not back in my eyes. Uh, and then Nixon, I think we get the deal done. We see Keyshawn back. I think he's, I I think he's a, a more integral part than just letting him go. Um, I, I still think the kick return game is important. Um, and I think as a backup CB, I think that's important too. I, th- I think Darnell Savage hits the hits the open market. He gets an offer that either he can't refuse or we're just not w- willing to uh, counter. Um, I think he is gone, and I think that just uh, kind of moves into and falls in line with what they're going to do in general. I think they're going to still keep uh, cheap this year, I guess is kind of a harsh but l- lack of a better phrase. I think the Packers are gonna, going to stay young, stay cheap. Um, I still think they have a, a job to do, a hole to fill with that safety room, and, and they're going to address it, but... It wouldn't be. It wouldn't surprise me if they picked up a, like a low level, uh, free agent. I know we talked about last week of them getting someone big in there, and that's what I want. But I think, in reality, perhaps uh, they don't, and then they just draft. Um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like the Packers are going to continue on this. Like we're gonna go young and cheap, and try to find really young, talented players. And we think we have a lot targeted, especially in this draft and the free agency, uh, coupled with the guys we already have. I think that's their recipe here. I don't think they're going to be spending a ton uh, and big, big splashes. I just don't see it happening. Um, you know, it might at the safety position, but I just, I don't know. I just don't see that coming. Um, when I, when you look at the, uh, the salary cap and, and the roster, uh, you have, man, you have uh, only like five guys that are five million plus on the roster with their base salary. Preston Smith, Aaron Jones, Jair, Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, and David Bakhtiari. Uh, under that um, is like Rashawn Gary and L. Jenkins and Devondre Campbell. Sorry, Devondre Campbell and Jordan Love are a little higher than that. Um, but that's like, that's it. You have like only 10 guys that uh, are making more than, um, you know, a, a whole lot more than the rest of them. And I think the, I think, uh, yeah, they had some money issues recently. 
but I think that they they're gonna trim the fat on some of these guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, not you know someone like uh, Jair or Preston or Jenkins. I don't know. How do you feel about Campbell? Like, like there's something going on, but like just as a player, I guess someone that has done well for us. Do you do you think he's gone? And do you want Devondre to move on? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd like Devondre back if they can say, obviously when he went through, you know, a number of injuries and I, I think he was frustrated because he was as a leader, he was trying to play through that. Um, and, and certainly that can get to any guy. Um, eventually you're like, Hey, you're feeling underappreciated because, you know, you see what you do behind closed doors and, you know, gets fans talking and you, you feel underappreciated and, you know, frustration kind of boils over. And I don't think, the, the interwebs and social media is the best place sometimes to to air that cryptically or even straightforward and in a little bit of what he didn't said but you know i think with this offense i mean excuse me with this this defense you, you need to have linebackers i mean coy walker is a nice young talent he hasn't played up to the billing at all um you know you're gonna you're gonna need linebackers to to play um a solid brand of football and and they're going to be asked a lot in this four three so um hey any any more guys you have there the better but i think that's also a position that is going to be addressed probably with one of those top five picks that they have so are you uh, saying you want him back are you, are you saying you, we um, need think, him back think, but do you want i think him? the way i think the way they can free up over 10 million dollars of money with that post june one designation i think it's just too much to pass up based on you know the the uh, the injury issue and the age, you know, as, as we've seen come down the stretch here. Yeah. You you might be right. And it just kind of sucks because I thought we, for once in a long time, Ren had depth and, and the, the, the middle linebacker off ball linebacker figured out for once. And now we have like another issue, right. Or another, uh, you know, you know, uh, divergent, a fork in the road, and it sucks. I, I guess that's kind of like emotionally why I want Campbell back is because he can, I know he can do the job. He's great. And him and Walker in the middle with Duffy backing him up, like that still sounds great. And I just wish it wasn't a position we had to worry about. Cause we had to worry about edge. You know, we had to worry about some D line. We got cornerbacks, safeties. I mean, running backs. Now, yeah, you, I mean, now you got the whole defense offensive, practically. Offensive linemen. But yeah, if you want to just talking defense, sure. I mean, the defense hasn't proven it today, but I think the one thing most Packer fans and Packer universe can be happy about with regard to the, the off ball, the inside linebacker and linebackers and linebacker play in general um, linebackers from a draft standpoint, I think for many years, we know under, you know, Ted Thompson's watch, and then the beginning of, of Brian's was just not something they're ever going to do. And then they surprised us with Koi, obviously. I think those days are past. I think they understand based on what they run and what they need to do. When you're talking, just trying to generate pressure with the front four, um, the importance of those middle linebackers in your defense, um, what they do, it's going to be huge today. So I don't, that's the one thing I think we can take away that we can all feel good about is I know that they know it's also important now. Um, and again, some of that's going to be addressed in this year's draft. You have the draft, and then you have before the draft, you have free agency, and both those things come before this uh, Campbell, you know, threatening of release. Right? This is after June first, so all that stuff takes place before that. So, do you think we're going to see um, his replacement on the team and him on the team at the same time before they would cut him? No. I don't. He would obviously with some of that May stuff, he wouldn't be there if they designate him post June one. Uh, remember, they brought him in June in the first place, Tay. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's it just one of those things. Uh, it'd be unfortunate if it happens. Uh, maybe they can come to some kind of agreement. Who knows? You never know. Things get reworked. People feel better. But I, I don't think so. I think, again, the two of the big salary cap cost saving moves, the two biggest and the easiest to do are. David Bakhtiari and Devondre Campbell. So I think they're both inevitable based on, again, I mean, Davis is easy. It's 40 million. You never keep it on your books. Um, not going to, not going to ride forward with that. And you can get 
you know, somewhere in, we talked about the how that all breaks down with injury grievances and that $16 million piece. You can't pass it up and, and you move on. And in Devondre's case, a uh, great leader. You, you like some veteran leadership, um, but there is that injury question and the age question now. So uh, you just have to say, well, uh, it'd be, you know, he'd be a luxury to have to a point, but based on the, the cost savings, you, you can't, you know, go with that luxury tag. Yeah. You just, you just can't. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm torn. I'm I'm torn between the emotional side of Tay uh, and you know the reality of the books and the situation we're in. I just don't. I just it, it sucks that we're gonna be, find ourselves at a deficiency. I think yeah, on the on the linebacker position. But alas, the you know the free agency is coming up. Um, so that means that yeah, maybe we can go get someone that's a little younger. And maybe a little cheaper, and it can be around for you know the little crack of window that's been opening for the Packers for the next I don't know three four years maybe. Um, I guess I have I've got a couple free agents that I've been targeting. I don't know if you want to jump into kind of that stuff yet, um, or I guess I could switch it up here. I got let me just let me just drop this nugget of news yeah, the, here. How about, how about the one housekeeping note? Um, that actually is Packers news that we yes, we yes. get to, and, and this um, you know this maybe this may, maybe you could tie it into uh, you could have a roundabout question about injuries with this one, but I'll I'll let you take it away. Well, yeah, I think it was Max Max Schneidman and or our friend Rob Domovsky that initially reported. Obviously, Aaron Hill will be the Packers replacement for Chris Gizzy as the new strength and conditioning coordinator today. Yeah. Um, they're, they're continuing, you know, with the overhaul of the four, three, they want to look like the Niners and now they want to also have a guy that trains the guys and, and gets them back to health like the Niners. So uh, he'll spent the last five seasons with the 49ers, their assistant strength and conditioning uh, coach under their head guy, Dustin Perry. He was a linebacker at the University of Minnesota. Boo! Uh, and spent time with the St. Louis Rams as undrafted free agent in 2014. Uh, not only did he get his degree in kinesiology, Tay, uh, but also he got his master's degree in applied kinesiology. Say that three times fast. Is it nice? Sports and exercise science from also the University of Minnesota. And if for those, uh, those lay people out there, Tay, kinesiologists study and teach wellness, understanding human movement, and how mobility affects the body, and specifically sports kinesiologists, Tay. They optimize athletic performance through biomechanical analysis, uh, training program design, and injury prevention and recovery strategies. Mm, mm. Yeah, so you got to think that he's going to be, you know, he's probably sitting in that meeting right now with Lafleur and uh, Mark Murphy, and they're like, "You got to get these guys on the field, man. You got to, you got to do something here." Um, you know, because we had, uh, you know, the coach uh, talk about um, Watson with his with his hamstring. He's like, "We got to get a plan." I was, I was say, I think he's, I think he's sleeping on Watson's couch at the moment. I think that's where they <laughs> sent him straight away. Here's the key to, here's the key to his house. Uh, Go get over there and break bread, and let's go get this thing figured if he, out. If he, if he pulls a hammy this year, you're done. You're done, Hill. You're out of here. One and done. Um, but he's 33 years old. He's young. You know, he 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 was a player just in the last 10 years, um, but he comes from that you know 49ers coaching staff technically, and uh, I don't know. I guess there's nothing to n- not like about this. If you have a look at the guy, he looks focused, and he looks like he has a chip on his shoulder, which um, a lot of those coaches do uh, out in San Fran. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, there's no reason to give him the you know the benefit of the doubt. Uh, bring him in. Let's see what he's got. But uh, to be honest, Ren, it doesn't. It, I guess it can't get any worse than what we've had in a, in a lot of years, right? We haven't had I, someone think, that's been. Like I think Chris flashy. was a heck of a. I think Chris was a heck of a guy, Tay. But yeah, sometimes, you know, the whole thing. I heard this put really well today by a couple different people, just listening um, to, obviously Packers talk out in the universe, um, and that's hey, the, the Packers are. This is the final touch on this whole thing as an organization, the new era Packers being pretty rolled over today. We got a whole new defensive um, 
look as far as a four, three, a mostly new defensive staff, mm-hmm. a new strength and conditioning guy. Obviously Aaron Rodgers left last year. Um, most of the vets are gone, you know, outside of, you know, a few holdovers like Preston Smith and Aaron Jones. I mean, it's a, this whole team is turned over pretty quick in two years today. This is a new look Packers. And, and I think it's a new look. Don't look back. And again, that's that's the biggest takeaway you take from this thing is new guy can't be worse, you know. Air, arrows pointing forward. Yeah, I no, I totally agree with that. I I believe that wholeheartedly. I think they've done a really good job of that. Um, you know, usually y- y- you have turnover like that and nothing happens or it takes a while. But um, I think these were all good turnovers, good things to happen. Uh, you know, and. Out with the old, in with the new. Let's not skip a beat, and let's move forward. I, I just, I love it. So I've, I've got nothing bad to say about any of these changes. Um, and it even comes down to the strength and conditioning. You know, it's like good, yeah. good. Let's go, because uh, um, a lot of people, I think, in the back of their minds, were complaining to themselves about like availability of some of these players this year, and over time. And um, excuse me, Ty. Yeah, what'd well, you say? Avail availability thank you appreciate that i mean this is completely i have no information to back this up but i mean george kittle was injured all the time that dude is down constantly up and down up and down and maybe this maybe uh, aaron hill has something to do with his ability to bounce back but that dude seems to always be available um when the time is right and uh maybe there's something to hill and what he's providing over there yeah and again a fresh take today nothing wrong with that um, well, we, let's, we're continuing to look at some of the free agents that the Packers could could look at, um, and if, if not like particular players specifically, we're looking at like position needs, and we kind of addressed the the big elephant in the room, the biggest position that we think is of need, and that was the safety last week. So if you missed that, go check it out. But um, I don't have like a ton of names like I did for the safety position, Ren, but sticking on the defense, um, I just kind of picked out a few names that kind of aligned with Tay's free agent acquisition protocol. Um, I kind of look at age. I kind of I factor in the like kind of like their their pro football focus score, and then I obviously look at the the uh, the team that they're coming from, the age, and then uh, they should obviously the position. Um, so I've, I've kind of selected three, Ren, and then I hope you kind of take take it away here and uh, uh, maybe list off some other ones. But I'm sticking with the defense for now. Um, I've got a cornerback, Chidobe Awuze from the Bengals. Awuzie. That's Awuzie. It's Awuzie. Uh, he's uh, on the Bengals. I do I do like that you started with that one. I, I, I was just like, wow. Well, how is he gonna say How is he gonna it? say this? This is gonna be good. <laughs> he but, he's yes. yeah, he's on the Bengals. He's only twenty nine. He has a decent score at sixty two point six on pro football focus. But again, he's not one of these super top tier guys. He's a guy that you you know, okay, this is the kind of guy that Packers go after in my mind. So um I like that for depth. I personally think they need cornerback depth um especially if nixon doesn't make it back it's like okay what are you guys gonna do you're gonna, you're gonna go young again you're gonna draft some guys that can it, it immediately be inserted i mean that worked kind of well this year but uh i don't know that's a you know a two year year in a row kind of thing so we'll see but that's one guy i kind of targeted uh the other ones are linebackers uh i've got edge rusher jonathan greenard from the texans he's 26 years old he had a 78 pro football focus score and i think uh he's one of these guys that could be uh also uh uh, targeted by the packers um and then i have linebacker aziz al sharir from the titans he's 26 and had a pro football focus score of 64.7 uh he's one that i think uh yeah I think the packers would also go after so these are some of these guys that uh i think i remember back when you know, the, the free agency period before um, the Smith brothers were acquired, I kind of like did the same thing. And uh, hopefully I can, uh, you know, identify this again like I did uh, the Smith. Oh, Rand, did you see that uh, 
our boy press uh, not not preston smith um the other smith god i can't even think of his name right now yeah, that'd be z z zadarius zadarius smith he's he's available so uh um just for for old time's sake would you ever want z back on the team well, that's that's a funny thing today because the only position I was going to highlight today again, I think there's some when we talked about positions last week that seem likely to address in free agency from a value standpoint. You know, most bang for your buck stuff you're not going to have to spend out the box for would be you know a veteran safety or you know again to replace Kingsley and Igbare as we know Kings is going to be out quite a long time rehabbing that ACL is is a you know, veteran edge. And of those, there's, there's a number of veteran edges that are going to be available out there. And well, the Packers now are a four, three Tay. So it's actually a defensive lineman. Yeah. You can call it an edge. You can call it whatever you want, potato, potato, but the guy's going to rush from the right or left. They're going to have to get pressure on the quarterback. Um, <clears throat> he is one of the guys that I was going to talk to. Nice. Could there be a reunion? Now the curious case is a Darius <laughs> and how he feels about, the Packers organization might get in the way of that. Cause I think he, he left with a little, little salt in his mouth. And he's one of these guys that seems to bounce around and just, uh, just be all over the board, but had another really nice productive year uh, out in Cleveland today. But you know, when you're playing on a defense, a la the Cleveland Browns today who have talent up and down that roster, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to get yours. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, when you have the defensive player of the year playing on your football team, um, that's, that helps put it that way. So um, he had a one year deal with Cleveland at 11.6 day. Some people think he'll get a two year deal in that $20 million range, (laughs) which, you know, all again, only takes one player, but if the feelings aren't, bad could he reunite with his brother preston <laughs> um yeah. i wouldn't put it totally out of the realm of possibility uh but i think maybe how matt lafleur feels about zadarius yeah. behind the scenes might yeah know, influence might the decision right right i it's it's strange. Like if I'm if I'm thinking with my mind, I consider it. If I think with my heart, I say no way. I mean, if if the Packers even consider this, then they would uh, be hiring a mercenary. They wouldn't be acquiring a company man. Uh, so you're basically just using him for his services. Um, and if you want to do that, sure, go ahead. If he if he's willing to play and he, and he's guaranteeing, because like the last thing you want him to do is come here and having a great year from Cleveland come here on $20 million or whatever it would be some ridiculous number and then have him be injured on the first game or just not come to play, which I wouldn't put it past him. So do I trust Z? Absolutely not. Um, does it look good on paper? Yeah. Admittedly. So it does. I think he's, if he's feeling good in the right place, you're going to get good play out of it. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. but, but that's the thing. Again, I think he's going to garner between eight and $11 million a year from, from somebody and somebody might give him more than a one year deal. And that's a, that's a might based on his age at this point. Today. He's 31. Um, yeah. He, he's going to be a little bit of a hired gun there. Um, another guy who played in Cleveland before another hired gun that I think might be just out of the Packers price range. It's going to be Jadavion Clowney. He's been, mm. yeah, he's just been the, the hired guy the last couple of years bouncing around the league now yep. on one year, one year deals, but had a serious 2023 of the Ravens day. Um, highest. He recorded his highest pass rusher rate, highest pass rush win rate and most total pressures in a season in 23 today. Um, and, and we know he's not a young man anymore. So he, he flourished in that defense that Mike McDonald, now the head coach with the Seattle Seahawks was deploying and had him uh, coming from lots of angles and those blitz pressures. So um, another guy, possibly, I think it's again, out of the realm of possibility. The one I, I see, and it's, it's down the road a bit um, with regard to, veteran edge rushers today is a former new york jet today and that's carl lawson okay. um, so lawson a couple years ago had a pretty bad injury and then basically re- reworked his deal to come back in 23 but 
found himself basically scratched from a lot of lineups throughout the year. Uh, he's been in the league seven years, Tay. 72.8 pass, pass rush grade with 49 pressures and eight sacks in 22, which was his first season back from a torn Achilles, something that happens to Jets apparently. But uh, he, he's, <laughs> this is the kind of guy, Tay, that has a lot to prove yet. Not not terribly old going coming into his eighth season. And you can probably get him on a one-year deal for the right price. Yeah. That's the type of, you know, defensive lineman I could see them, them bring in again. Yeah. Carl, it, Lawson. Carl Lawson would be the one I would say that's the, that's the place they, they probably looked in place and was playing in a four, three a la, a la Robert Sala, the, the former uh, 49ers defensive coordinator. So yeah. definitely, definitely something he's familiar with the scheme. So familiarity, you know, is one of those big things when you see these kind of things done in the NFL as well. It, it looks like Lawson took a pay cut to stay or whatever. He just lowered his salary to six million. So um, being a healthy scratch most of the season with the Jets last year, he's he's not going to be making that. And someone would give him a, a decent deal, maybe the Packers. But I thought, you know, with some incentives, yeah, late sure. in, you know, if you, if you hit these markers, make up to six million with some incentives, but maybe a base around four. That's a that's a doable kind of guy you can see that would would be a, a free agent signing that the Packers would entertain again familiar scheme what the Packers are going to be running now with Halfley um, that one to me is kind of the one I would pinpoint I thought I thought players flowed from Wisconsin to New York not the other way around Ren. in this case it, it might work that way <laughs> uh who else do you got do you anyone else uh you're kind of like no, those, thinking? those are the ones you know when I looked at veteran edges that I could see couple hired guns there and, and the veteran piece that might make sense. I, I think um, the other edge they had in Minnesota this year uh, might make some sense as well. Uh, shoot. Who's that? Uh, Marcus. Uh, um, goodness. I can't, I can't think of it Tay. help me out. Who was, he played for the saints for a number of years and then uh, just ended up in Minnesota. Um, uh, let me then, see. Marcus Davenport with the Vikings. Yes. So, yep. I just uh, brought it didn't, up. Didn't have a great year, but um, played pretty well. This is the guy that uh, the Packers traded with the Saints that one year, so they could come up and grab him when the Packers also needed an edge rusher at the time. But, you know, a, a guy that definitely a one-year kind of prove it thing, um, just like he did with the Vikings, get a little production out of him. Um, there, there'd be a guy, you know, they play a 4-3 there as well and have for a long time. So coming from that same kind of kind of base system, um, you can see something like that as a as a cheap veteran edge as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't know. I just there's always like that that formula that the Packers have, and um, it's usually guys that you know aren't the flashy ones. They're always uh, have some value, but uh, aren't you know at, at, they're not at risk of staying with their old team either. So not going to be yep, not going to break the bank either though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what you should look for. That's what you get. You should I'm, get ready. I'm doing for. a, I'm doing a little Costco oldie shopping here for some veteran <laughs> edges. Tay. Yeah. I'm, I got my Packers GM thinking hat on. That's yeah. what, that's what I'm doing. Here. I mean, cause really like, I mean, there are good rushers and there's a lot to it, but uh, I mean, of all the positions that you could plug and play an edge rusher is one of them. You can just be like, you're here, you know, learn the system, but you're just, you're getting after that guy there yeah, with the it's ball. C, it's C quarterback, get quarterback. Day. <laughs> and some of these edges, yeah, they've, they've been around enough minutes that um, they, they know what their assignment is. So I, I, I think, I think safety is a great one to go after and, and solidify. We have to do something with that position, but the edge, edge rusher. Um, yeah. Well, let's go, let's go after that and free agency and get a couple guys. It worked for us with, with the Z and Preston. Uh, can't, I don't see why it can't work again. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, I don't have anybody for the offensive side. Maybe we can do that. Um, next week, Ren, uh, or you know, and just kind of address that. But obviously, yeah. Let's let's talk about some Saquon and some some uh, Derek Henry <laughs> next week. Yeah, maybe some Antonio Gibson. Who can they bring in? To Dude, I mean, I would, running back position. I would love to see a Saquon Barkley in Green Bay, but it's never going to happen. Like, like the price would be way too high. Um, 
That would be dope. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, maybe then. Okay? Sure, Let's do that but... instead. Sure, sure. No, I just none of that stuff makes sense from a from a vet running back piece. I mean, Antonio Gibson's the one I'd be like, I'd be cool with Gibson and and uh Aaron Jones. That'd be fun. But yeah, yeah. other other than that, no, I'm not not too interested in talking about that next week, but um I'm sure there are other things we can talk about. Before we get out of here, though, we, we kind of are hitting our time threshold, which we thought it would be today. But um, stuff to think about. We could talk about a little bit more next week. But of the positions we talked about last week and tonight, some of them being edge rusher, being safety, being obviously offensive lineman in general. Um, it could be a center, could be a tackle, could be a guard, uh, running backs, cornerbacks, um, you know, when it comes to the draft, let's say those first three picks, Tay, at the moment, where would you prioritize those go? Ooh, the first three. You got you got your first round pick and a couple twos there, Tay. Yeah, I think what is it? Uh, I had it up earlier. 25, um, 41, and what, 45? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's like high, a high late later one and then a, um like 10 it's like number 10 in round two and then yeah 25 or whatever in round two um well i i guess i would say i would say safety um defensive edge probably and and an old lineman i mean the reason and the old lineman can be anybody and lately we've been drafting a lot of or acquiring a lot of swiss army linemen that can do a lot of things um one thing people like to point out this off season, and we can maybe get into it a little more next week, but um, is this whole Josh Myers situation. He had a quietly good year this year. Uh, you didn't see his name talked about a lot. You didn't see the refs picking on him. You didn't see a lot of sacks given up. Um, he did a way better job than we were thinking he was he was going to, and he was kind of on the hot seat for us in the in the off season. We thought, uh, okay, he's one to watch. Well, he did pretty well. He exceeded our expectations. However, he's his contract is up not this year but next year. So, um, based on how he plays this year, are you going to extend him? Are you going to let him ride and let him go? Uh, are you drafting his replacement? Um, so that is definitely something to look at. Uh, and to see if the Packers actually do that this draft. But um, I think O-Lineman is definitely someone, so, somewhere where they they target that. And is it a Elton Jenkins type that can play center and guard? Or is it just, you know, do you just draft a, a, another guard, uh, another another center? Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of move away from from Myers. I, I don't know what that is. But I know people are been ta- have been talking about that. And that is on people's minds um, for good or bad, but, uh, that's what I see happening. Um, I see safety edge rusher and offensive lineman. Um, but ultimately Ren, I would love if they just took the best player available. That could be another tight end. That could be a running back, which is not going to happen in the first round. That could be, um, that could be a wide receiver. That could be a cornerback. I don't, I don't care. I just didn't think they need really good players, and um, it wouldn't really bother me if if it's a, if it's just another awesome athlete and playmaker. What's gonna upset me, and and then we'll, we'll probably bring this up until draft day, is that they'll draft some no name that we had never even heard about on no one's radar, and wondering if he fits that, wondering if he's gonna be an athlete. Um, but I guess we'll have to do our research when that time comes. But uh, yeah, that's that's I guess my feeling on on the first three. Well, I tell you what, man. I think from what I hear already, this is a pretty deep draft in O linemen up front, the top hundred, and cornerbacks, and two premium positions in the NFL. I mean, you can never have enough good offensive linemen. And truly, what do the Packers have as far as boundary corners? Uh, Jair. That's it. I mean, there's no other proven two. Carrington's, I think, going to be a nice young piece that'll get better as as time moves on. But I wouldn't be upset with either an O lineman or a cornerback taken at at 25, and then in round two, I if whatever one I didn't get of those two, I'm going, and then I'm going, I'm going linebacker 
um, with the other one. Yeah. Uh, now that's obviously press your need. You do always have to let the board come to you. And, and sometimes, yeah, you take the best player available or you say, yeah, that best player available is somebody I, I like, but I don't really see the fit because I'm good there. So I'm going to trade back and I'm going to get some more, more value. Um, and somebody else will come get that player. That's maybe best on their board. So he's got his way of making that one up to Tay. And, and, you know, if it's not there, it's not there. And you, you get, get some more value, but those are, those are the three priorities I'm doing as I get into the, the rest of round three, you know, just to prime that a little bit, I'm definitely taking a running back in the third round. So yeah. I'm getting another, another speedy three down Aaron Jones style of back to match with Aaron Jones, because Aaron Jones always, isn't always going to be able to be on the field. And you can't go from that kind of offense to nothing. As we saw when Aaron Jones was out this year and AJ Dillon's a primary back, you can't have that be the case. You need another Aaron Jones. Yep. I agree. I agree. I love that. Uh, going after uh, a running back in the draft. I think it's a, uh, it's going to be, it's going to happen. It's uh you have to do it and I'm expecting it. So I love that. Uh, yeah. And we'll, we'll see. I, I, I just don't see them trading up um, a bunch of picks for someone. I, I just don't see that happening. That could that happen. Sure. But um, I just don't think there's like, a super super need on this team that they can't feel in other ways um, that would let them or allow them to do that. I, I I just don't see that that's Goody's style. I think he's going to use all eleven picks right now in um, a really roster bolstering way, and he's going to keep things young. He's going to keep things cheap. I think for the for the foreseeable future, and that includes this draft. I don't think he he goes all in, wastes you know. A, a second and a third round just to go up a little bit for, for a guy. I just don't see that happening. You don't have to give up a ton to move Tate. the one scenario. I do see them moving up. I think there's going to be a lot of top end talent in the first round of this year's draft taken. That has nothing to do with the Packers and nothing they care about. Um, there's some really good top end, you know, three guys that play wide receiver. I think that will go before the Packers pick. Um, well, it'd be, you know, you can never not have enough riches, but I don't think that's a concern to them. There's going to probably be four, at least four quarterbacks taken. So you got seven off the board right there Tay. Um, because there are things like that happening, there's going to be potentially a really good offensive line or a cornerback that falls. And I could see them going, Hey, this guy gets to 21. 22 we got we got to just make sure we go up and get them mm -hmm. um i could see him i could see him move up like that okay yeah well i mean it depends on who that is but um yeah i guess i could see that but i i, I could also see them just waiting around just waiting and, and you don't have to give up a lot of capital to do something like that it's not like you're moving up 10 spots in the draft so yeah and um, yeah and that back, so we'll, we'll back uh, that back 10 is a little different than the first the front 10 of the first round yep good time Cool. Well, um, you know, there's always more to talk about, and we'll be back uh, next time with a little more offensive free agent uh, analysis, uh, look at stuff like that. Obviously, there's a couple needs on the offensive side, so uh, we will be we would be remiss to not uh, you know check that out and look into it more. Uh, Ren, I well, we gotta get that we gotta get that fullback of the future, Tay. Yeah. Hey, what? Yes. Teaser. Teaser alert. I. I may or may not love a fullback. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we appreciate everyone listening. And uh, go follow us on social media. Go check out our website, PackerUniverse.com. Send us an email, info at PackerUniverse.com. Ren, thanks for joining me tonight on this Tuesday. Uh, I know Mrs. Ren has a special uh, day tomorrow, so I'm glad you get to spend it with her. Uh, give her all the universe's love, and we appreciate all that she does behind the scenes to make you look awesome. I do my, that mostly on my own say, but uh, <laughs> I will I will pass along the note. Um, she will she will appreciate you for that. Um, but until episode two hundred and sixty one say, we get to hear your uh, your love some for some old William Henderson say <laughs> on the pup list. Yeah.